What's going on, guys? So I'm in Halifax right now for the first time visiting this guy. And you know, instead of showing him Peggy's Cove, downtown Halifax in the bar scene, I'm taking him straight to the back country. Sorry for the shaky <laughs> footage here. We've got a big dog who is not a lap dog, but thinks she is. We're heading into the back country of Nova Scotia this weekend. Another great weekend. It's May 1st and the trout are biting. So we brought the fly rods, bought some dry flies. Who knows what's going to happen? Uh, it's going to be a good weekend. Rio, what do you think? We have the Kapol crew in the shuttle right now. Leo is kind enough to drive us. Mm -hmm. I had my tip, so it was good. Drive-in has been pretty spectacular so far. Driving right along the coast. Keep her steady, Leah. <laughs> God. When you got there. Tied this fly this morning. It's a bleeding muddler minnow. It's a little bit of marabou back there to give it a little flare. Oh, she's flaring. All right, we still got some distance to make it until our port, until our campsite tonight. Uh, about two kilometers to be exact. And as you guys can see, it's pretty dark out. And in Nova Scotia, the sights aren't obvious, so we might be in a situation where. It'll be difficult to find our portage, so we better make make some our campsite. We're trying to find the campsite, not a portage. Yeah, that's it. We want to get off our portage. <laughs> so we had a little bit of a kerfluffle at that last portage. We were there a little longer than we expected, so then we decided to paddled about like two and a half, three kilometers, and it got completely dark. Again, in Nova Scotia, there's not too many marked campsites, but we knew there was a campsite on the opposite shore. Uh, we got to this area at dark, and we happened to find the portage, walked up the portage, found this campsite. All is well, got a fire going now, but um, it got a little dicey at the end there because there's not too much of flat ground in these areas. But we got one. We got one. We're sitting cozy now. Definitely. Look at that flame. Look at that flame lick. Woo! Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Noah, what are you cooking up for the boys tonight? Well, since Alex is this is his first official time in Nova Scotia, we are doing a backcountry donair. So straight donair meat, green peppers, onion, nan bread, donair sauce, put it all together. If you haven't tried a donair, come to Nova Scotia and get yourself a fast food donair. Yo, is it donair time? It's donair time. Oh my God. <laughs> Backcountry don't airs. Oh man.
homemade fly. Man, your fly worked. Trout. Beautiful. It's a, it's a nice fish too. Nice specimen. Such a satisfying feeling. Man, that was a sweet fly. Your second cast, you said? Second cast right into that froth. I felt a tap, and then he just hammered it. Why don't you take my spot here? Oh! Oh! I just had another one. Another one? With another homemade fly, boy. So sick, man. All right, so I've done a little retying. I think this guy is hopefully gonna do the trick. Otherwise, Noah's gonna catch all the fish. Man, nicely done. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that lure. It's half the size of its head. It's a nice little brook trout. So sick <laughs> on a fly that I tied. The guests of honor have arrived. Nice spot you got here. That's a pretty nice sight. Pretty nice sight. Hey, what's up? Hey. Good morning. What's up? How's it going, man? Good morning. Hey, everybody. How's the paddle in? Oh, it was beautiful. What a morning for it. Definitely. Yeah, it's gorgeous. The birds are chirping, my spring has sprung. How's what? it going, man? What is up? Did you say that was your first cast? Yeah. Dave is calling this spot the honey hole, and it's living up to its name right now. And there she goes. Yeah. So Dave arrived, and we're gonna head on, to start the loop. It's mid-morning, the rain is relatively stopped. I'd say it's stopped. I was wondering why the canoe was so hard to get through the bush, and then I saw this. So a lot of the portages in Nova Scotia, they're not marked, but they're relatively obvious once you find them. Perfect example, we went up that stream thinking that was the leading to the portage. Turns out there's a nice trail right beside it that uh, once you're on it, you can see it, but you have to find it first. Yeah, these ones are old. These ones haven't been used much in the last few years. You can really tell that when you're actually walking through the forest. Yeah. yeah. So annoying. Oh, 
Oh, right, all right, here we go. Totally overgrown, eh? Oh man, wow. And then donair sauce. So I wonder if you put donair sauce in anything, if it's considered a donair then. I think so. So nice. Colorful? So colorful. Yeah. On the top water too. Right on the top water. Finally a nice easy portage today. All of these sticks have been, or all these logs have been lied down so that you can drag your canoes over top. Little canoe highway here. It's a Mayfly bite. They are everywhere. Nice work. We've arrived at camp. If you've been following along the Nova Scotia Backcountry series, this is the same site me and Leah camped on when we paddled Tangier Grand Lake back in May 2-4 of last year. Alex is working on the lumber and check out our dinner plans. Oh baby. Look at those colors boys and girls. Doesn't get much better than that. We have a little surf and turf going up in here. and we didn't bring a big enough pot. So now it's a bit of a puzzle, trying to figure out how we're gonna do everything. So Noah pre-cooked all of the potatoes and onions and put them in this little storage unit. While we wait for the brook trout with bacon bits. <laughs> it's not bacon bits. What is it? It's uh, lime. Yo, on here they look like legit bacon bits. <laughs> I was like, man, you'll put that stuff on anything. <laughs> I do have bacon bits here if you I want. Know, I know you do. <laughs> A little pre-chowder appetizer. Beef tenderloin. How's that? It's fatty, salty, and delicious. 
everything you want it to be right now. I, just, I still like just like the easiness of the gas stove. Like with the stick stove, like you need to get dry small pieces of wood. But I don't know if that'll always be available for us. It's the morning of day three. It was a little colder last night uh, with the not being so overcast and not so much humidity in the air. It, uh, I wouldn't say it went below zero, but it was definitely flirting with one to two degrees last night. Yesterday, the fishing was pretty on point. It's uh, in the morning, we were hammering them at the campsite and then the first couple lakes. But as the day went on, uh, it kind of got windy and a little colder and the, and the, the bite kind of died off. The mid-afternoon, we got to a riffle where may, there was a mayfly hatch and they were getting flushed into the pools. And in the pools, these trout were just coming up and sucking them off the surface. So we switched to dry flies. And this is the first time I ever caught a trout on a dry fly. Such a cool experience. I'm, it's a whole new type of addiction when it comes to fly fishing is the topwater bite. But these mayflies look very similar to this lure, I'm this fly I'm using to match the hatch. That's what I put my success to today on the yesterday on the dry fly. It was how closely this thing resembled that hatch. That's also a really addictive part about fly fishing, is the fact that you try to match the surrounding environment, they like try to figure out what the trout are eating, what sort of bug, what sort of larva and do whatever you can to mimic a fly that can trick the trout into thinking it's eating its natural pr prey here. Gotta love it. All right, well, I'm gonna get the fire going and get the coffee going, because you know how it goes. Nice one. That's a fatty, eh? It's so fat, man. It's a nice one, eh? It's so nice. How do you boys feel about all this? Woo! <laughs> We're just out here on a beautiful day. This is my favorite time of the year. It's it's pre-black fly, and it's still like 15, 16 degrees out with no wind. And the brook trout are biting, so it's pretty much the perfect storm for having a great time. Can't ask for much more.
<laughs> and this section's so nice. Yeah. The one thing with solo boats and a headwind is you might need help from your friends with a quick tow. <laughs> or a tow across the entire lake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, we are at the ocean. If you're gonna taste these waters, you would taste salt. The last little section was a lot of white water, but a kilometer of it, and it brought us directly into a bay here on the Eastern shore. We're now paddling on the ocean. Yo, should, you, should you taste the water to confirm? I just did. What does it I, taste like? Uh, it tasted like fresh water still. Still fresh. And that's the trip. There's the car. It was a great three days on the water. Lots of brook trout, some fun white water, and some good times. <laughs>